Hello. Hi. <laughs> Okay, um, we realised that, I realised ages ago, that although we've told you about Chris's diagnosis, we've not actually told you how we got, uh, how how the diagnosis came ap about, how we realised that there was something wrong, <laughs> what are you looking like that for? Did you ramble? <laughs> do you want to do all this week? carry on, carry on. So, um... Okay, I'm going to do most of the speaking because he's got a really bad memory and he tells it weird. And I've got an excellent memory and don't tell it weird. So back last February, so February 2015, Chris played a game of rugby for his rugby club, or St James's. Um, and the next morning his ankle was really swollen, his left ankle. Wasn't it? Yep. Yeah, so he complained about it. And I give little sympathy for rugby injuries because... Why? Self-inflicted. Self <laughs> Same as hangovers. And if it's really bad, I think, what are you doing? With me? Put a hair in my mouth. <laughs> Carry on. Um, so I said to me, we'll see how it goes. Rest, rest up and see how it goes. It's a bit difficult for him to rest because he drove a van for a, li for a living. So the week after he went to A&E, because it was still sore and swollen, and it's very rare for Chris to go to a &E. If you know him, you'll know it's very rare for him to go to a &E, isn't it? Yeah. How long did it take for you to go to a &E when you broke your jaw in three places? A couple of days. A few days. <laughs> and even then he nearly walked out. So I knew he must have been in a lot of pain. Anyway, went to the hospital, had an x-ray. There was nothing on the x-ray. And they said that it was probably ligament damage and to rest up... Um, and it'll, it will heal itself. There's not a lot you can do about it to rest it and it heal itself. Um, it didn't heal and the swelling didn't go down. So you you were still doing what you were doing on it. Well, did still the pain come and go and stuff? Yeah, I was still going to the gym playing rugby, but it just kept swelling up every Monday morning. So every time we played rugby and been out having a, a, a few drinks, it swelled up. So was it? when did you go to Malaga last year? It was earlier in the year, April. wasn't it? April. End of April. So around this time last year then? Yeah. So around this time last year, um, there was a rugby tour and his ankle was still swollen. Um, so I went back to A&E just to check that, I don't know. So I could fly because it was swollen Oh yeah, because it was swollen. <clears throat> so to check that he'd be all right flying. The doctor, they didn't have another x-ray then, did they? Because there was nothing in the x-ray then. Um, the doctor at the hospital told him that he thought it was gout. There's nothing else they can do to stop coming back. <laughs> There's nothing else that A&E can do to stop coming back. Go to your GP. So, you flew. And you went on holiday for the weekend. Came back. Ankle was really sore. So, we made an appointment at the GP. Who tested you for arthritis. Bear in mind this is an ankle. And we since know that gout doesn't really show itself in the area that it was does it it's no, normally in, no, in your toe in toes your toe. or you know that type of joint so went to the doctors doctor sent him for a blood test to test for arthritis because he thought it might be arthritis so this is may last year um and that came back to say that he had high... burning man did give me naproxen which is an anti inflam all right and told me to change my diet while all these blood tests were going on because he thought it was gout yes as well as testing for arthritis yeah they did think it was gout didn't they because yeah, so that the... went on for about two or three months with naproxen. Then because it wasn't going down, they gave me them gout pills, the weaker ones, then they gave me stronger ones. So this went on for about four or five months. Yeah. And we were just saying last month, we were just saying before, I was driving, last, the, and this, the swelling and of his ankle didn't go down at all during this time. We were saying before, last year, we went to Quarry Bank Mill, didn't we? Mm. On May Day. It's very good if you want to go. And I drove because his ankle was really sore and he couldn't put any pressure on it. So that was last May. So this has been going on so since So what did you do then? May. You made me go around Quarry Bank Mill all day <laughs> because you said it was just gout and it was self-inflicted. Well, uh, I was told it was gout, it's self-inflicted. And did you stop drinking? A little <laughs> bit, yeah. <laughs> no, anyway, right, regardless of whether we thought it was gout or not. Kept going back to the doctors because you knew it wasn't right, didn't you? And for other reasons, which are not to be, we won't bother going into that here. Um, and then when did you feel the lump? I'd, f I'd felt it for a few months, but I just thought it was like a ligament thing, where I banged the ligament. Yeah, so you could feel a physical lump on your leg, couldn't you? <clears throat> so 
So I kept going back to the doctors about this gout because the gout wasn't going. And then eventually the GP said, we'll refer you for a scan on this on this lump. And this was October. November, wasn't it? Yeah, but did you not have your first one in October and then you had to no. move it? No, November was the first one because I went to Wrightington Hospital first. Oh, yeah. So that was the beginning of November 2015. So this is from February to November. We feel this lump. And the referral from the GP stated that he thought it was to do with the gout. Yeah. Because uh, it was a lot, because you can get lumps with gout. So you went by yourself because we just thought it was part of the gout. And you didn't care because you said so <laughs> inflicted. <laughs> and I. Yeah. 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 You didn't give a rat. Well, yeah, I thought it was gout, so. I can't, I can't be held responsible anyway, for anyway, anyway, the yeah. ultrasound... The ultrasound guy said, what did you say? You got my ankle's pregnant. Yeah, so my ankle's pregnant. And That's he what. started scanning. Yeah, and he, he said he wasn't happy with the lump and he, he sent me away for an x-ray there and then. And then he come back and said, I'm going to get you in for an MRI in Wigan. This, on the Friday, and this was the Wednesday when he had the ultrasound. Mm. So I thought it was a bit strange that I'd been waiting for like two months for an ultrasound then. Within two days, I'm having an MRI. So I went to Wigan for the MRI. Uh, they were doing that, and I knew one of the radiologist people doing it. It's one of my mate's sisters. And I was asking her, saying, is it bad news, is it bad news? And she's like, I can't say anything, I can't say anything. I'm like, well, wink if it's bad news and blink if it's OK, but she weren't having any of it. <laughs> so well done, her, for not well, this being was afraid. the Friday. Yeah, this was the Friday. And then they said... The guy, the guy from the earlier scan was in the thing with yeah. you, wasn't he? And uh, when before I left, they said you'll get the results at your doctor's on Monday. But bearing in mind, you're meant to wait normally. Like we can never, our doctors are shit. Well, basically, no, just for an MRI result, you normally wait a few yeah. weeks. Yeah. And I just thought it was strange and worrying that they're going to get my results by the Monday. So anyway, I went back to the doctor's on the Monday, and he said it was a bone tumor. And then I had to go for a biopsy. That was the it, week after, wasn't it? Yeah, I had to go to Manchester Royal. For a bone biopsy. No, it wasn't. It was just a soft tissue biopsy. Soft then. tissue biopsy. At the end of November. Then I got, then I got referred. No, we went oh, back Jesus. to Royal. Right, you tell it then, for God's <laughs> sake. Because you're forgetting. So after the, <laughs> the soft tissue biopsy, we went to see Dr Gregory at Manchester Royal. And that's when we were told it was Ewing sarcoma at the end of November. Well, yeah. No, they thought it was. That's why The biopsy had come back. But he... See, with Ewing sarcoma, there's only five centres in the UK that deal with um, deal with that type of bone cancer, and one is Oswestry. So he was referring Chris from Manchester Royal, where he had a service, to Oswestry. So the week after, we're at Oswestry, aren't we? For a bone biopsy. For a, to see Dr Cool. For and then a bone, the bone biopsy. biopsy the week after that. You don't need to know the in-between bits, you're rambling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell him about why... Because at that meeting, they told us that it was might not be Ewing's. Could have been lymphoma. They told us it could have been lymphoma. You want to pray for lymphoma. Pray for lymphoma because if it was lymphoma, they could have saved the leg. Because basically, it's a <clears throat> although Ewing's in itself is a rare cancer, not, Chris doesn't make sense for Ewing's. It's in the wrong place in the bone. It's not the right age. He's not the right age. He's far too old. He's got gout. He has got gout, but it's caused by the tumor, not by waste poor diet. Kidney. The waste, kick, the tumor waste kicks out. What what is it that gout? Something in your blood. The say acid. The say acid. Um, he was well. He'd not been poorly. He was still putting weight on it. So he, the Mister Cool, who's at Oswestry, sits on the Ewing's panel because there's so few cases a year. There's a Ewing's panel that meets nationally and discusses all the cases, and he sits on that. And he said he'd never seen a tumour like Chris's, the way it had behaved. He didn't think it was... It wrapped round the bone and strangled it. Yeah. It started from the middle, come out, and then wrapped itself round and strangled it. So he didn't think it was a bone cancer. He thought it was a blood cancer, which will sound ridiculous us saying that, but would have been better. Yeah, he said you want to pray for that. Because the, better, the, the better treat... One, lesser yeah, two evils, he said. Lesser of two evils. Basically, the bone could have been saved. The, Ewing, the way Ewing's attacks the bone... It makes it unsavable and it's so it's so aggressive. So then the week after that you're in for oh, so oh god it's twenty ten seconds. minutes oh, long no one cares for, for ten minutes biopsy. This is what I have to put up with. Do you know? Can I'm on. telling the story. Right, crack on. Um, the week after you were twenty second, you were in for a bone biopsy. Yeah. 
And they brought me back in a couple of days later. 24th of December. Christmas Eve. The 23rd they rang you, didn't they? To tell me it's definitely you, Ingrid. You're definitely losing your leg. Oh. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Full body MRI, Christmas Eve. And then anyway, that's that's the story. That's the then story. Then started that's the chemo in January. Yeah. Right. You, could, you could have broke that down into about <laughs> four minutes. Oh my gosh. I like to ramble, I'm sorry. That's what I have to put with. Look at his face. <laughs> So that's what got us to today because it sounds a bit strange. Like, how did you like all of a sudden he didn't complain about being poorly because he's not been poorly, have you? Nope. And you've been very lucky that it's nowhere else. They said. Well, apart from the other two places in the leg. Yeah, because the classic classic chamber is a spread, even though it's in this, even though it's concentrated in his leg, the actual class it is a spread because it's gone into different bones, and it's gone into soft tissue, so it's classed as a spread. So oh, I'm done now. Okay, goodbye. We're at home now because there was no beds at Christie's. So Christie's... You've already done that on a different video. <laughs> I've not done it yet. Right, I'm going. Goodbye, we're going out for tea. See you later.